Hi everyone, welcome to this ET bindings tutorial video. I'm just going to give you a very high level overview of how you can create ET bindings. So once you're in VR, I would initially just go to your Steam VR dashboard, as you can see here. Now, if you want to modify bindings, click on the setting cogwheel on the bottom right. Okay, so the next section here is you will need to select controllers on the left hand side and you have the option to either manage controller bindings or show old bindings UI. Now, the old bindings UI is for legacy bindings that don't support the valve skeletal input. We're going to go with that option for now in this video. Um, and here you can see all of the games that you have installed. Select the game that you want to modify the bindings for. In this case, we'll select Beat Saber as it's very straightforward. OK, now you want the ET controller binding selected. Sometimes you might see when you open up this window that it's actually ET tracker in hand and you'll see this symbol. So what you'll need to do is just click on the menu next to it and select ET controller. Now. On the left hand side of where you've just selected that, you'll see current bindings. You'll see some bindings that have been created by us at ET. Um, they're the developer bindings. So select the binding uh, for the ET developer binding to modify that initially. Once you clicked on that, um, you will see uh, a picture of ET and all of its inputs. And if you just scroll down on that screen, you can see that ET is quite a powerful controller. There's quite a few inputs that you can modify, including gestures. So the gestures are listed there. So we have a pinch gesture, we've got the grip, and we've also got um, pinch and point. Great. So in this example, we're just going to map the ET tap zone. Now, this is the proximity sensor that exists on the tracker itself. So if you look on the left hand side here, we're actually in mirror mode. Um, so mirror mode means that if you make an adjustment on a binding on one hand, it's automatically mirrored to the other, which is fine for a game like Beat Saber. But if it's a more complex game, you probably don't want that checked. So you can see all options for each individual hand. Okay, so find the tap zone that you want to bind initially. So there it is on the left, listed. And click on the edit icon, which is like a little pencil. Now on here, you'll be presented with a number of options, which includes click, touch. And if you click on more options there, you'll see the option to map a, a long touch or a hold, that kind of thing and then you can select the appropriate action you want. So if you touch the ET tap zone, what do you want it to do? And here it will give you available options. So pause menu button is at the top there. I think we'll just map that for now. And then if we click on the tick, just to confirm that action, that's great. Now, when you load up Beat Saber, you should find that using the tap zone on the controllers will result in the pause menu being displayed. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to map uh, a binding in the new SteamVR binding UI. So this is a newer experience that supports Valve's skeletal input. So first of all, you don't necessarily need to have the game open in the background. You can just select it from the list under controllers, but we've got moon dust by valve open in the background so we're going to click the settings cogwheel okay now go we go back to controllers and then we can select manage controller bindings now here you can see it's actually listed as the active controller et tracker in hand for moon dust but we want to change this because we're not by making bindings on the tracker itself. We're making bindings on the ET controller because obviously ET is modular. So you have the ability to detach the tracker. So if we click choose another, 
We just wait for it to refresh. And here you can see ET Tracker in hand is selected again. We need to change that to ET Controller. The screen will refresh and you'll see the available bindings on the left hand side. So let's edit one of these. And here we go. So because finger tracking adds a lot more complexity to games, the, the UI looks a bit more busy than if you're trying to modify the legacy bindings. So here at the top in the various tabs, you've got various actions that are able to be completed within the game. For example, there's uh, grenades, there's buggies that you can control, there's things like teleporting, and there's default actions as well. So you will need to go through each of these in turn to configure the bindings to your preference. So let's just click on default for now. And again, We'll just have a quick scroll down on this screen so you can see the options. So we've got the track pad, we've got the slider on front of ET, we've got the grips, pinch gesture, point gesture, and also each of the individual fingers are available for mapping. Again, at the moment, we've got mirror mode on, so we kind of explained that earlier on, but you can turn it off depending again on your preference. I'll just go through each of the menu options from left to right here. So if you just highlight chords. So basically what this means is it gives you the ability to combine one or more actions together to trigger an action in game. So let's say for example, that you want to fire a gun by curling just your index finger. That's great, but with ET, we obviously need to make sure because we've got so many inputs that it doesn't misfire. That means that we can combine two inputs on ET for it to fire. So we can combine, say, thumb on the trackpad with index finger curl will then fire. But if the thumb isn't down on the trackpad, it won't fire. And that's what you use chords for. So you can select two different actions, combine them together, and that will enable the action to be triggered in game. Okay, so if we move on to the second option is poses. So depending on the game that you're selecting, you might have a number of poses that are available for the controller. Poses is basically just a way of saying, what is the controller doing at any given time? Is it just a standard controller or is it pretending to be something else like a menu pointer, for example? So if we click on one of these, we should be able to see any options available in game. So it looks like it's just the basic controller pose action uh, that is needed for mapping, and that's fine. But you might see other options in here. So you just need to make sure if there are other options in here that you map it to a particular action on the controller. So left hand raw is the one that we generally use and i'd imagine that's the one that you probably use for the majority of games with et so just make sure that you have left hand raw selected as pose if it's not already and any other poses you can map to one of the others on the left okay if we close that menu now okay and we've got haptics obviously et supports haptics um, we've got small LRA motors, haptic motors built into the controllers to give you that feedback. So what you can do with haptics is just basically turn them on and off. So left hand haptics, we're in mirror mode at the moment, so it's only giving us a left hand. Just make sure that you've got haptics selected so the system knows that haptics are available on the controller that you're using. Next, we've got skeletons. So this is this concerns uh, finger tracking, but you need to obviously let SteamVR know which controller is which hand to apply the skeletal input to. So here again, because we've got mirror mode on, we've only got the left hand available, which means that once a value is selected here, it would also apply it to the other controller for you. So we've selected skeleton uh, right in this case. So just click close. It will mirror over to left hand anyway. And now SteamVR knows that these controllers support skeleton input and we've told them which hand to map it to. Okay then, so let's do something similar to what we did before. 
Um, let's maybe map the tap zone for an action. So if we click on edit for tap zone, just as a reminder, the tap zone is on the tracker itself. Okay, so let's map it to menu. There we go. That if we double tap at the moment on the tap zone, it will open the menu. You do have the option for a single tap, a long press, or uh, just having your thumb held for a certain period of time on the tap zone as well. And also just a touch. ET um, obviously has, as we mentioned, a lot of inputs, and we highly recommend that you use either single or double tap to trigger actions with the tap zone. So now that that's mapped, we can click OK, which is the green tick. And that will be binded to the T controllers. If we go back to the game, double tap will bring out the menu. All right, well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this video helps.